Okay, it says on live, but it says live video is starting, so maybe it hasn't yet. Um, all right, let me turn this thing off. The um, what we you know what we talked about was uh you know was our relationship you know with the Lord and the things that we um we do or we allow to happen once we give ourselves to the Lord and stuff. And, you know, the thing about being born again is that, you know, you feel that, you know, in the very beginning when you're born again, you feel it when you repent. But on the same token, you know, that isn't something, a uh, purpose when you that you had in the very beginning, you know, to serve the Lord and, to be, and be forgiven of your sin. That should never stop. You know, the Bible talks about growing from faith to faith and glory to glory. The Bible talks about, you know, growing in Christ from one day to the next day to the next day to the next day. And, and for some reason, people do not understand how important that is for you to walk and to live with the Lord and seek the Lord on a daily basis, you know, and to ask the Lord to really help you on a daily basis. I think what has happened with so many people is that they have allowed themselves to become complacent. And some people, you know, get complacent or comfortable, you know, and just kind of stop seeking and pursuing. And when you stop seeking and when you stop pursuing, it is impossible to really love the Lord the way you need to love the Lord. Right. And you're definitely not going to serve him and stuff. And I think, you know, um, one of the things that contributes to, you know, like this... Uh, uh, this easy life once you repent is because of all these different avenues that are laid out there for you. Mm -hmm. You know, now think about this. In the Bible, in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, it talks about there only being one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. God is trying to show us and tell us there's only one way Right. One way to re to get repentance, one person to receive it from, one person that can lead you, teach you, and guide you by His Holy Spirit, you know, and that's all. All of that comes from God. One God, one Lord, one God and Father of all is what it says in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. See, but yet when you got, okay, you got the Baptists over here saying. Uh, you know, we got it over here. And you got the Methodists saying, we got it over here. And then you got the Pentecostals saying it. The Assemblies of God, the Church of God, the Lutherans, the Presbyterians, all of, the, all of those are different denominations. Right. And every one of them have their own doctrines. Yeah. See? And people really don't get taught, for the most part in those places, they don't get taught the Word of God. They get taught the church doctrine mix with and let the word of God be mixed with that. You're going to get more of the doctrine than you're going to get more more, more, more than you are going to get the word of God. Right, See, yeah. That's why people so proudly say, oh, I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist, I'm, I'm Pentecost, I'm Assemblies of God and all that. You know, did you ever hear the, hear the apostles or the disciples walking around talking about, you know, they were of this and they were of that? Mm -mm. Did you ever hear them talking about no, that? They said they weren't. You know, and you know why those guys were able to maintain the walk that they had with the Lord? They did not allow themselves to be distracted by anything. They took God's word. They read God's word, rather. And when they were walking with Jesus, they hung on every word that he had to say. That's right. Yeah. We don't do that today. We don't hang on every word that God said, see? And the sad thing about it is most people don't realize it until their lives are all screwed up. Remember I was telling you about people last week where, you know, there were a lot of people that went to hell and they didn't realize they were going to hell until they got there. That's right. Because on the earth, they thought that they were living the good life. They were living the life that was truly in God, truly in Christ. They thought that they were doing it, man, you know. And yet when they got to, when they died, they went to hell. Sure. See? That's why God commands that every one of us in here, we need to know the truth for ourselves. Don't depend on me. 
you know, to give you the only truth that you're going to ever get. Right. Because the Bible says you study to show yourself approved, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of God. And you're going to have to know the word of God in order to rightly divide it because of what I just said a second ago with all these different denominations and doctrines out there. That's right. See, That's right. you're going to have to know what the truth is for yourself and not allow yourself to be deceived by every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Right. That's right. See, you're going to have to. And see, this is the thing that bothers me about people. They don't want to take the time to read the Bible, study the Bible, believe the Bible and stuff. See? But I guarantee you, they're going to go to that dog. They went to that doggone basketball game that they had at Auburn because mm -hmm. their team is really playing well now. So we're going to that game, see? <laughs> well, no, I was up a little bit too late last night, so I don't think I'm going to church today. See? Yeah. God is always put on the shelf. That's right. Always. That's right. And there are everything, so many other things that are more important to people than God. Jesus said, look, you need to fear me. That's right. Because I'm the one who can cast your soul into hell. That's right. See? That's and right. if you don't fear me, I'm casting you in hell. See? That's right. Why would you obey somebody you don't fear? Mm. <coughs> you ain't going to do it. You're not going to obey him. See? And the thing is, is that when you don't obey God, guess who in the world is driving your car? And that car being you. The devil is. That's right. He is, see? That's right. If you don't have any fear of God, why are you going to listen to him? Why do you think you're going to listen to him? If you think you've already made it, if you've already done everything and all that you feel like you need, why do you need God? If you think you've already arrived, you don't need him. Mm. See? You don't need him. And the sad thing about it is your life is all falling apart, but yet you can't figure out, well, what's wrong with my life, whatever. You know, look at your relationship with God. How about starting right there? That's right. When you call yourself saved, see? Start right there. Ask yourself the question, am I really serving the Lord? Am I really doing the will of God? Am I really meditating and thinking on the things of the Lord day and night as we're commanded to do? Mm. That's what David said he did. Right. So the thing is, is that until we realize that the life that we live in Jesus is the most important thing in our lives, we are going to continue to have peaks and valleys. That's right. You're going to continue to have that. See? Yeah. You know, and, and the thing about it is, the, 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 the more troubling part of that is, okay, you say you're saved, but you're not living like that. And God says in James that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and let not that man expect to receive anything from God. That's right. Wavering, doubting. See, once a person becomes double-minded and they think that on one side of it that they're right, but then on the other side of it, God is saying something totally different from what you're saying. Mm -hmm. See, because you've got this easy believism and Jesus said you're going to suffer in the same sufferings in which I suffered. You're going to be persecuted. Right. You're going to be hated and stuff. So why is it people are oh, well, well, all on me and all of that? You know, for once in your life, you made a mistake for about 30 seconds to live for the Lord. And people looked at you. See? They weren't paying you no attention until you started being different from them. Mm -hmm. See? And that's the whole thing. When you start being different from them. See? People would much rather sacrifice... Mm -hmm you know, having a real relationship with Jesus and let their pride and their arrogance send them to hell. I'm serious. Yeah, Think about it when you were in the world and your pride and you mm -hmm. had that pride mm -hmm. and stuff. See? Man, I, you know, I get challenged with it every once in a while now because it tries to pop its head up. See? We're not prideful people in that regard, like the world. Right. We are people that who are truly of God. We're, we're those kind of people that we're very confident in our relationship with the Lord because we really believe what the Bible says. Amen. And we have chosen to make sure I'm doing that, you know, and I'm not going to be doing all this whole other crazy stuff that other people are doing because God didn't call me to do that. See? Yeah. And there's an understanding that, look, I know that I'm going to be 
ostracized. I'm going to be treated as somebody that's that's not like everybody else and not like them. See? Yeah. And that's the way a lot of people judge you as to whether you are like them. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And that's the reason, you know, a lot of folks don't, you know, they have a hard time when they hear the preaching out of this church is because it ain't nothing like their preacher. Right. Yeah. And this is what most, most people that go to all these different churches and stuff, they expect every other preacher to be like their preacher. Mm. Right. Think about that's it. Right. They do. They expect you to be, they expect your preacher to be like their preacher. See? Right. And your preacher is like, well, good morning. <laughs> How was everyone this morning? Everybody doing good? Everybody doing good? Everybody's good this morning? Well, you know, God has really got a blessing for us today. Sad thing about it, you never hear nothing about the blessing. They just yeah. tell you that stuff. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. They ain't going to ever tell you about anything going to rock the boat. Right. You are not going to hear anything about sin. You're not going to hear anybody being called out on their sin uh, simply by preaching the word of God. That ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the one thing about, I was looking up this stuff that I, I, I was going to preach on uh, preachers and stuff, but that changed and then the other thing changed too, you know, so. But the thing is, is that, is that in these churches, they call them seeker friendly churches, mm -hmm. see, and being seeking, they're out seeking for people, you know, but they're not seeking them in order to fill them with the word or to, you know, to save them, you know, save them the biblical way, mm -hmm. but to make things comfortable for them. Right. See, because they're not going to preach a, 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 what they would deem a negative word. They're not going to preach anything that's going to make you feel bad. That's basically the bottom line of it. They're not, in other words, they're not going to tell you the truth. Right. They're not going to preach the Bible to you because when Jesus preached the word of God every single day, especially when the Pharisees and unbelieving Jews followed him, he made a whole bunch of people mad. See, what you believe as a child of God is not going to make people happy. And the thing about it is you cannot compromise that because they're not happy. Right. And what a lot of professing Christians do with is they won't say nothing or they're just kind of like be a, like a French person hanging around all the ungodly people and never open their mouth about, you know, how sinful what they are saying and what they're doing is. They ain't going to say nothing. Mm -hmm. See? And instead of, you know, being bold and so forth, you become a coward. Right. You're a coward. You won't say nothing and stuff. See, God puts us in positions and places to represent him. And I've said this so many times, to represent him. And if we represent God, what do we represent? The truth. Right. We're representing Jesus. We're representing everything that he died for. See, and we're not ashamed of it. But unfortunately, most of the folks are deathly ashamed of what Jesus did. See, mm -hmm. you can't say you love Jesus if you if you're not believing like He believes. Right. You can't say that. That's right. And if you say it and know you're not doing it, you're lying. Right. You're a liar. That's what you are. See. And this is what people don't want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth about the condition of their heart. And that's where the word of God zeroes in. He zeroes in. It zeroes in on your heart. You. In rather on your heart. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. That's where God looks. God don't look at the way you dress or the way you look or whatever. Because a lot of people are like this and their heart is blacker than coal. Mm, yeah. See? Sure. They know how to fake the game. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for them, God recognizes and knows all the fakers. That's right. Every one of them. He knows them. He knows the fakers. Mm -hmm. You can't slip nothing by him. That's right. And, stuff. So, and some people are stupid enough to think that they can. <laughs> <laughs> now, how crazy is that? Now, yeah. we're talking about God, but yet I can slip something by him. Mm -hmm. See? No, you can't slip nothing by God. God knows everything that you did, before you did it, when you did it, why you did it and the consequences of after the fact. Right. 
That's right. He knows all of that, see? And it's just high time that we recognize, recognize that, you know, about the Lord. Let me just share something with you, and then we'll go over to Mark chapter 7. Um, <clears throat> believe in God. It is our believing that whatever Jesus says is absolutely true and correct. He cannot lie. That's right. What he says comes before everything else and every other voice we may hear. That's right. That's how you that's how much you have to become separated from the world and the people of the world. That's right. Is to where the only voice that you hear is the voice of the Lord. In the tenth chapter of John. When Jesus was talking about his sheep, he says, my sheep, he says, they know me and I know them. See, just what he said, see. And so let's just turn over there real quick. It's John, I think it's John chapter 10. This ain't where I plan on going, but whatever, y'all know how it is every Sunday. John, John chapter 10. Thank you. <laughs> okay, verse 1. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, Verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Right. And this is a person that's trying to get into heaven without living a repentant life. That's right. You know, these people that tell you, you know, you know, go run around the corner about five, six times and you're going to be saved. See, they're looking for another way to enter into the kingdom. But Jesus said, you're a thief and you're a robber. That's right. It's what he said. So in verse two, he says, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. See, Jesus is a door. No man cometh unto the Father unless the Spirit draw him. Mm -hmm. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what the Bible says. He says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. When he putteth forth his own sheep, go back to verse 3. To him the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. See? So what is it when you have a person <coughs> that's walking in the truth of God, being led by the Spirit of God, and they're walking in the spirit and they're walking in truth. They're following Jesus. Right. See, because they're doing the things that he does. <coughs> they're doing the things that he do, that he would do because he's leading and guiding them. Right. Yeah. In spirit and in truth. Right. And so what happens when you see some sheep going with Jesus and a whole bunch of the rest of them, most of them just kind of sitting back there just kind of trying to look stupid and looking crazy and all and stuff. Can't but two things even be one or two things need to be happening. Either they don't believe him, or two, they can't hear him. Mm -hmm. Remember Jesus in chapter 8 of, Matt, of John, where he was talking about those folk, those guys, those unbelieving Jews who was talking about we be of Abraham's seed, God is our father, and so on and so forth and stuff. He said, you can't hear me. And then when we get over in the 41st verse of chapter 8, Jesus gives a reason why they couldn't hear him. Because they were of their father, the devil. Right. Right. Satan was their father. The devil was their father. And Jesus said, ain't no truth in him. Mm -hmm. And if those who are of the devil, as Jesus said, do like him, ain't no truth in them either. Right. See? When you hear truth coming from the devil, it's not going to be true. Right. It's going to be either changed or it's going to be twisted. It's not going to have the same intent when Jesus speaks it. Amen. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he's going to counterfeit or counter what Jesus says. 
Remember when God told Eve in the Garden of Eden that if you eat of this tree that you're going to surely die? Right. What the devil said, no, 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 don't worry about that, sister. You ain't going to die. Mm -hmm. He said, you shall not surely die like he was God or somebody. Right. See? And that's what you have in a lot of these churches that you have these guys in these churches and in these pulpits who sound like they they talk like rather that they really know what they're talking about and they talk about it as if it's the truth. Right. That's why God says you need to know the word, but also you need to discern the spirits to see whether they be of God or not. It's what right. you need to do. See? And if you're not doing either one of those, then expect to be blind. Expect if you die to go to hell. See? Mm -hmm. You know, it's on you to know the truth. All of it. And it's on you to live your life to honor and to glorify God. It's not on anybody else. That's right. That's our responsibility. Amen. See? You should never ever come to this church or any church if you got a pastor that tells the truth and expect him to be able to to give you everything that you need so that every day of the week you can walk out there and you got everything you need from him. See? Mm. If that were the case, I mean, you may as well be a robot. Right. <laughs> I mean, really. And forget about God because God is not your God. Your pastor is. Because mm. whatever he said, that's what I'm doing. See? Mm -hmm. My pastor tells me how to live my life. No, he doesn't. Mm. Right. If your pastor's telling you anything about how to live, you know, in, in, in terms of uh, in your relationship with God or whatever, it came from God. It didn't come from him. Right. These right. words in this book, they all belong to God. Amen. None of them belong to any man. Right. Amen. I don't care how much you love your preacher, how much you worship your preacher. If you're worshiping him, you and him both are probably going to hell. Right. Because if he was preaching the truth, you know, and preaching against sin and pointing out your sin in your life that you are willfully doing or whatever, you ain't going to like him too much. Mm -mm. You're not going to like him that much, see? People who say that they love God, they don't like truth tellers. And by truth teller, I mean they're going to tell you what God said. Yeah. They ain't going to be mincing no words about nothing, see? You let them see you out there, dog, going fornicating or, 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 or committing adultery or whatever. They're going to call you a fornicator and adultery and tell you you need to repent or you're going to hell. Sure. Right. See? And a lot of people commit spiritual adultery because they say they love God, but they're serving the devil. Mm. They do a whole lot more things, you know, that agree with what the devil stands for than what God stands for. See? That's why you got a whole bunch of this, all this crap going on in the church. It's because it's more about them than it's about the Lord and stuff. You know, these secret friendly churches I was talking about a while ago and stuff, you know, man, they, you know, they, they, they major on music. They major in lighting. They major in all of this kind of stuff that appeals to the flesh because they're more interested in you coming to the church for no other reason other than for your money. And if they keep you coming, like I said last week, then they know that they're going to get your money too. Right. See, that's going to happen and stuff. And so, so Jesus said, he called it his own sheep. And if his sheep following him, they're going to be doing the will of God. Yeah. You know, in, 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 uh, um, in Colossians, the Bible says that if you say that you're in him, you need to live as he lived and walk as he walked. See, you got to ask yourself the question, am I doing that? That's right. Am I really? Am I really living? Can you turn that heat on? It's cold living here. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, Jesus says, you know, you got to live. The Bible says, right, you got to live as He lived, and walk as He walked. It's what you got to do. And so, what what happens is, once you made up in your mind that you know you're going to do what you want to do and stuff, nothing really matters about God. Even when you try to pursue God. You don't pursue him, you know, with all of your heart because you still have a divided heart because you still got some of that sin in there. Right. Yeah. You got to get it out. Right. And the only person can get it out is you. Mm -hmm. See, God ain't going to jump on you and just snatch your stuff out your heart. That's, right. That's the whole reason God gave us the, the ability and the choice to repent. Right. To repent and ask forgiveness and stuff. See, mm -hmm. and God says, I forgive you. 
but it becomes harder and harder and harder and harder and harder for some people, you know, when they don't want to do that. Because they have allowed themselves to be lied to by the devil and to create and the devil has created a cocoon for them so that they feel comfortable in that. Mm -hmm. And he lies to you every single day. There ain't nothing wrong with you, there's something wrong with them. See? Yeah. And you know, and the thing you have to ask yourself the question is, okay, if they're all wrong, then why are they all saying the same thing? Why are they all talking about, you know, walking with the Lord, loving God, repenting of their sin, you know, and talk about surrendering to God and all that, and they ain't even talked to each other. But when you get them all together, they all say the same thing. That's right. See? They go, see, that's the difference in a person that just claims to know the Lord and a person that really knows the Lord, see? Because the thing is, is that those who are truly of God, the one thing that they have in common that bonds them together is the Spirit of God living in them. That's why it's not difficult when we share with one another to understand what the other one is saying. That's right. It's not that hard. Why? Because it's the Spirit of God that confirms His Word in the lives of His people. Amen. See? And He does that on purpose. Because God wants you to know what the truth really is so that you don't get deceived. So that you don't be led astray and stuff. See? Because, see, people think they don't realize the one thing, I believe, more than anything that is overlooked and in some, so many cases forgotten is the spiritual aspect of your life. That's right. Your life is totally spiritual-based. Yes. Total. Because the flesh cannot please God. There's nothing good about the flesh. The Bible says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why an unsaved person can't worship the Lord. Because the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, that's what Jesus called the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. All he's going to ever tell you is the truth, God's truth. Right. See? And if he is the only one that does that, as he receives the messages and the word and the guidance from the Lord and stuff, what do you think all these other people are listening to? And who are they listening to? The devil. You know, and one of the things that Jesus said in John 8, 44, he says, you will do the deeds of your father. That's right. God. If you don't know what that means, then you need to go in the Bible and Look up the devil, what the Bible says about the devil in every scripture. Go to a concordance or something. And see what the Bible says about the devil. That's right. First of all, the devil and Jesus have nothing in common. That's, right. That's why you as a believer have nothing in common with an unbeliever. Right. Why? Your father and their father are different. Yeah. See? Have nothing in common with them. And every person... That, that 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 hears my voice and and, and and they will hear it at some point when they re uh, when this thing is replayed is that you need to ask yourself who is your daddy mm -hmm. the things that I'm doing in my life who do they line up with the most right. do they line up with Satan or do they line up with Jesus mm -hmm. see the Bible says that if they line up with Jesus you're gonna be walking in newness of life That's right you're going to walk in the light as Jesus is in the light. You're going to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You're not going to give t attention to anything that's not of God and anybody that's not of God. That's right. Jesus said, if you are my sheep and I'm your shepherd, he says that you will not follow a stranger. Amen. Somebody bring it another gospel, another Jesus. A different gospel, a different truth. But there's only one truth. Amen. See? And Paul talks about that in the first chapter of, uh, of Galatians, and we'll go over there in a minute. Um, but in verse, let's see, in verse 4, when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. Question, do you know his voice? Do you really know the voice of Jesus? Or do you even really take the time to even listen for it? 
Because Jesus is saying, look, he talking to his sheep. And they know his voice. That's why sometimes when, I think we used this example a week or a couple of weeks ago, you know, when you were saying, Donnie, when you were saying that the Lord told you to pull out the rope. And you listen, said, wait a minute. And then you pulled out the rope. And he kept telling you to pull out the rope because he wanted you to do something, see? Right. And so, but people don't think that that's the way God operates, see, because that's too much like, you know, the world, the natural roar for somebody just to pull up, say, pull off the road and all of that, see? They don't think that that's like something God would do, see? That God would tell you to pull off the road for a reason, see? But what happened with the uh, apostles and stuff? Most of their ministry, you know, after the day of Pentecost. Didn't the Spirit tell them to go here or to go there? What about when the angels seen Peter up on, or when the, uh, when the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord uh, manifested himself to Peter when he was on the rooftop? I mean, what about that? What about when God sent an angel to Cornelius' house? Mm -hmm. Spirit of God, God sent him. See? And he told them. And what did they do? Exactly what they do, what the uh, angel told him that he needed to do and go where he needed to go. Sure. Peter did the same thing, see? And actually God was revealing to Peter that he is no respect of person, see? And basically he was saying, you are no better than anybody else, see? Because they looked down on the Gentiles because look, they were God's chosen people, mm -hmm. see? But when the Lord sent the word to the Gentiles and stuff, see? They didn't, Peter didn't hesitate. Sure. He didn't understand it, but what did he do? He went. Sure. And he finally got the river of revelation when he got there. See? So the thing, do you really know the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Holy Spirit? Do you know his voice? Do you expect to hear his voice? See? And I'll be honest with you, you're not going to hear his voice if there's no relationship. That's right. I mean a real relationship. I'm not talking about a verbal one. I'm talking about a real one. In verse 5 it says, And a stranger, and he's talking about his sheep. They follow him because they know his voice. And he says in verse 5, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee or run from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. See, see when, you, when you've been spending all of your time serving the Lord and walking with the Lord, you know, and only wanting to hear his voice and only wanting to know his word, then you really don't want to hear anything else. Right. It doesn't even interest you. That's right. It has nothing to do with God or relationship with the Lord. So I really don't want to hear nothing about all of that. See, that's why, you know, I was saying earlier, those apostles, the reason that they were able to do the will of God is because they did not allow distractions in their lives. Right. They did not allow unholy people in their lives, the unsaved people in their lives. Now they ministered to them, but they were not made a part of their lives if they didn't repent. Right. See? I mean, like I said before, you can be a child of the devil one minute and be the child of a God in a few more seconds. That's just how quick the things change when God puts his hand on you. Right. See? They change just that quick. And, and the thing is, is that they're not going to change if you're not pursuing God. See? If you're not pursuing God, it's not going to change. Yeah. And the more you think that you don't have to pursue him, the worse your condition is going to get in regard to darkness. Because what does the Bible say? The God of this world having blinded their minds. And when the devil blinds your mind, there ain't no place you can go but one place and that's to slip into darkness. Mm -hmm. There can't be any light. You're not allowing it in. That's right. Jesus has no place because you shut him out. See? And one of the things I think that some people, I don't believe they're uh, uh, and that could be many people think is is that Jesus is going to force his way in on you. He's going to force who he is on you and make you. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. It don't work like that. It ain't right. going to happen. See? Right. Because I, I said this before as well many times. 
If somebody makes you do something, you may do it, but you're not going to be a happy camper. And it doesn't matter how well you know how to do what they've asked you to do, mm -hmm. you're going to still do a crappy job. Because they made you do, do it. it. See? Right. But when you choose, that's why God lets you choose. When you choose to obey Him, you're going to be real good at it. Because right. you understand the love that He has for you, and you understand the love that you have for Him. And you don't want to do anything or not do anything that's going to disappoint him. That's See? Right. Because Jesus means everything to you. That's right. And because of that, man, I'm going to do whatever he asked me to do. See? Amen. And you can tell when people have a relationship, have a relationship and the kind of relationship they have with Jesus when they're called to do something for it. If they immediately start complaining. You know that they ain't got the right relationship. Right. See? Because when God told Abraham to do something, did he complain? He or did he hesitate? He didn't even right. hesitate. And here's a guy that didn't even know where he was going. Right. But he said, because God told me to go, I'm going. I don't care where it's at. Because no matter what's, what's where he sends me, I know that he is with me. And I know that he is my rear guard. And he is the one that protects me. So I'm not worried about anything like that. See, those guys develop a relationship with God. A very, very intimate one. Right. They spent time with the Lord. And the reason they did that was because their relationship to God was important to them. Right. See, it was important to them. See, so they didn't care what the cause was because once they were in his presence, and once they established and then developed that relationship with him, they realized that, man, everything about God is good. You know, God don't make all these promises in terms of, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that. He said, I will meet your needs. Right. But when you have a right relationship with God, you don't worry about your needs. Right. You take him at his word. You just simply believe that if he says he's going to be my needs, he's going to be my needs. So I don't have to worry about that, sitting around wondering about whether he's going to do that or not. See? And when you're the sheep of God, then, you know, sheep have been uh, called some of the dumbest animals on the planet. Mm -hmm. See? Because they have no problem following the shepherd. Right. They'll go wherever he tells them to go. If he leaves them in a doggone river, they're going through the river. Right. They're going to follow that shepherd. See? I mean, are we willing to follow Jesus through the river, through the storm? through the rain, through the trials, through the tribulations, are we willing to still trust him and walk with him even when we're experiencing these kinds of things? If see? He say again? If he leads. That's right. But see, you know when he's leading because there ain't nobody else like him. That's true. Nobody else like him, see? He has totally distinguished himself from being different than everybody else. See, and the reason that is is because God made him that way, yeah. and he pursued God. He pursued the Father. He pursued the things of God. See, when you get saved, when I got saved, we all have that same potential to be everything that God wants us to be. We have the same potential. God says, I mean, think about all the gifts that he offers us, the gift of salvation, the gift of healing. The gift of, uh, of deliverance, you know, the gift to have the power of God, you know, where the devil don't have no control and no authority over you, see, because I give you power to trade on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy. We've got to, at some point, start realizing that everything that the Bible says through Christ and the apostles have said that we can do we can do it, see? But the thing is, am I going to believe God or am I going to believe a man? That's the question. Sure. Am I going to believe God or am I going to believe a man? That's the question, okay. see? And so we have to make up in our mind that we're going to believe the Lord no matter what. We're going to believe the Lord. And a lot of people can't make that statement because they've not allowed themselves 
you know, to have that kind of relationship with Jesus that he had with the Father. See? And the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, let me slide my chip a little bit. So, when, turn over to uh, Mark chapter 7. <coughs> And what happens to a lot of people is the same thing that happened to the Pharisees. They got fixated on um, on things and stuff and prestige and all of that. They got fixated on it. So in verse 5, then the Pharisees, in chapter 7 of Mark, then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashed hands. He answered and said unto them, <coughs> Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. See, Jesus didn't have a problem calling a person what they was. If you sin, what, did, what do you call a sinner? Right. Jesus says, if you try to play uh, both sides of the street, you're a hypocrite. And he told you that to your face. Now, in our time, days and time, you tell somebody that to their face, they're ready to fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though you're telling the truth. Right. He says in verse uh, in verse 6, says, He asked and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. See, and that's something, you know, that I said earlier, and that's what I, was, what I meant uh, when we were talking about all of these different doctrines and traditions that people are having to deal with. You know, we've had so many people come through this church, uh, I've said this also as well, many, many times, many people. And the sad thing about most of them They've already been to three, four, five different churches. You know, all different denominations, basically. They tried, they, they started out in the Pentecostal church. They didn't like it. So they left that church. And then they said, well, we're going to go to a Baptist church, see. So they go to a Baptist church. Didn't stay there. Well, we're going to go to the Methodist church over here and see what they got going on. Went to the Methodist church, you know, didn't like that. Went somewhere else. So by the time you get people, when they have gone to three or four churches and then they come to your church, think about how screwed up their doctrine is. Yeah. They don't know what to believe, see. First of all, if you're truly born again, you know there ain't but one thing that you're looking for, you know, if you're trying to find a church after you get saved. All you want is the truth. You want God's yeah. truth. You want to make sure that Jesus is in charge, that he is Lord of that church, and that the pastor is not only the pastor, but that he's preaching the truth and he's living the truth. See, mm -hmm. a lot of pastors will try to preach the truth and they skirt all around the truth or whatever because all they want people is just to give the doggone a, 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 a taste for it, but they don't really want them to eat it. See, mm -hmm. because see, when people start taking, you know, when Jesus was talking about eating of my flesh and drinking of my blood, all he's talking about, man, is you eat all the word because he is the word. See, and you understand the shed blood that he, that, he, uh, that he shed on the cross for your sins and stuff. And so he says, you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. When he said that in the sixth chapter of John, the disciples, not the twelve, but the other disciples that, had, that he had sent out, they said, that's a hard saying. They said, man, who can do that? Who can believe that? What's going on with this guy? Is this guy some kind of a cult or something now? See? But they couldn't understand it, see? And why was that? They weren't really committed to him, see? They didn't know him. The 12 knew him, and why? Because the 12 knew him because whatever he said, they just ate it and drank it. They didn't care about, you know, what he said because they knew they could trust everything that he said. Yeah. They had walked with him every day, and they saw that everything that he said came to pass. And when he preached the gospel, they saw the difference that it made in people's lives. And not just the healings and stuff. I believe there were people that got saved and they changed. Look at Mary Magdalene. You know, 
I mean, look at her life and stuff. She didn't care what nobody else said. Everybody else had talked about her as an adulteress, as a crazy woman full of devils and so forth and stuff. And here comes a man that did not condemn her one time. Right. But he did lead her into newness of life. Right. She was so thankful to the Lord that when he went to the Pharisee's house, she was down on her knees weeping. Mm. I mean, like bawling yeah. and washing his feet. See, that's a humbling thing to wash somebody's feet. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, she didn't think that she could ever be forgiven. She didn't think that she could ever change. She didn't think that anybody would ever, you know, think enough of her to take time with her and explain some things to her. Right. Yeah. See, that's usually the, the case with Jesus. He would always make time for people that nobody else had time for. Mm -hmm. The Jews was not going to gonna hang around with a doggone leper. Mm -mm. Are you crazy? You think the leper, the, the, the Jews are going to be in the same area or vicinity of a leper? Mm -hmm. No. But what happened with Jesus? They came to him. He didn't run. Right. Jesus saw the need. And not only that, Jesus, when he saw those lepers, he realized, and he already knew rather, that this is why I came. I came for the lost. I came for the hurting. I came for those who could not help themselves and came for those that nobody else wanted anything to do with them. They were ostracized. Right. See? That's right. Right. And he could understand that because that's what they did to him. Yeah. They ostracized him. Yeah. When you don't like somebody and you hate somebody, even if you got to walk past and you ain't speaking, but you're going to do this. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the truth. You know, so <clears throat> the thing was that Jesus had a lot more in common with people than people think he did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at how he grew up. A carpenter. Mm -hmm. A dirty, filthy carpenter. <coughs> dirty, filthy carpenter. <laughs> I've never seen a carpenter <coughs> working on homes and all of this stuff. I ain't never seen one that wasn't dirty unless he was a supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only guy that didn't get dirty. Because he walking around doing this, 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 and this. You know, remind me a lot of Mary. <laughs> Yeah, you need to go right here and do this. <laughs> we be walking around in the yard. Yeah, oh, by the way, you need to, we need to make sure we do this over here and put and dig this stuff up. Then you come in the house. We need to fix that up there. <coughs> and I'm thinking, Lord, would you please muzzle this woman? I mean, put a big old muzzle on to cover her whole head. And not only that, put her in handcuffs. So she can't point at nothing <laughs> behind her back. Because if you can't come up in front of her back, you need to be up here doing this. You need to do She's still going to be pointing and stuff. So we got to bind her up so that she don't be doing that stuff. But, but the thing was is that <clears throat> Jesus had in common with those people. See, why do you think when you get saved that Jesus don't understand you? You know why? He was tempted in every way, just like you. Every sin. Did he say he don't understand? Yeah, he does understand. Because he was tempted in every way, just like us, but he didn't commit a sin. Right. See? And he came. Think about how much he loved you now. He came and was tempted and tested in everything that we have been tempted and tested in. Right. And a lot of it, we gave in to it. Right. See? Yeah. Now think about it, how it was so easy for you to give in to it, but Jesus resisted it because of you mm -hmm. so that you wouldn't have to go do that anymore. You don't have mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, 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 succumb to, to that temptation anymore Right. because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. See, yeah. understanding, you know, first of all, who Jesus is, and then who you are in him. Right. 
you can't be nothing and you are nothing and we are nothing without him. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible says I can do nothing of myself. Jesus said that himself. Right. Everything he did, it was always with the Father. Mm -hmm. Always. See? Yeah. And until we understand that we can do nothing of our own selves, then we're going to be the same way. Right. I can do nothing of myself, but if you don't realize that, and if you don't know that, and you and think about it. Now, we all have done stuff on our own. Thinking that we're all big, you know, I can see Karen just walking around, head up like she bad. Like she, <laughs> like she done done something, you know, and all this stuff, you know. And then all of a sudden, she go out there thinking that she all bad and all this and all that. And the next thing you know is, she come back with all her shoulders all slumped or whatever. <laughs> well, I didn't really, wasn't able to do that, see. You know. Why could not do it? You forgot about who with you or who was supposed to go with you. If the Bible says you can do nothing, 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 nothing of yourself, why are we out here trying to do stuff uh, you know, on our own? Right. See, if we don't belong to ourselves anymore, right. we belong to God. That's right. We are supposed to be allowing him to do whatever it is he wants us to do. See? Amen. And when we understand who he is and who we are, we're not just born again believers. We are children of God. Right. Children. Amen. Children. Every person out there can't say that. And what <laughs> we don't understand is why do we allow the devil to doggone take control of our lives and do literally whatever he wants to do and we do show no resistance. See, mm. how is that possible if God is your father and Jesus is your Lord? It says there was no resistance. It says that you just cower down and say, hey, go ahead, devil, you know, because we think that those things are natural. Bad times are natural. Yeah, we're going to have things come in our lives that are going to appear to be bad. But we don't just throw up our hands and give up and say, oh, well, Lord, that's just too. No, man. The Bible says you call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Amen. And that's not just the born again salvation. Saved from any situation that you got yourself into, God will get you out or go through it with you. Amen. See? Amen. Sometimes the things that you go through, you know, there's a reason. Yes. God put you in them. Right. See? Because there are things in our lives that if we don't go through a certain kind of experience, we're not going to grow beyond that. That's right. See? That's why you have to have trials. That's why you have to have tribulations. That's why you have to have persecutions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Jesus had all of those things and did not complain one time. Amen. And you never read or see in Scripture where they hindered his, 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 uh, uh, his ministry whatsoever. That's right. See? When you know who you are in Jesus Christ, you don't let certain things and certain people deter you, first of all, from doing God's will or to talk you out of having faith in God. That's right. That's See? right. Why do you think God tells you to hang around with certain kind of people? Those certain kind of people are being people just like you who have a relationship with Jesus, who love the Lord, who walk in faith just like you do, who understands, you know, going through trials and tribulations just like you ought to understand them, see? Because the thing is, is that if you believe every word of the Lord, Jesus told you you're going to go through some tribulations. You're going to suffer in some sufferings. You are going to be persecuted. <laughs> and I don't know why people, when they get persecuted, you know, especially if it's for righteousness sake, why are you throwing your hands out of the stand where it's going on or whatever, see? See, if you're one of those people like that, you know, and you're trying to tell me that or whatever, you need to turn your back to me. Because I don't want to see your ugly face while you complaining to God. And it's all because you didn't trust him. Right. That's the only reason. You didn't trust him, see? I mean, I, I have a battle every day. Every day. Every day I have a battle with the devil. Every day. And you know where the majority of the fight is? Mm -hmm. Control of my mind. Mm -hmm. See? And God keeps telling me, look, you don't have to think about that. 
God said, you got your mind on the wrong thing. He said, you're thinking on the wrong thing. Right. See? God said, you need to trust me. You need to believe what I told you right. and believe what I said. See? Amen. He says, keep your heart and your mind stayed upon me. He said, didn't I tell you that if you keep your heart and your mind stayed on me, yeah. I will keep you in perfect peace? peace. I will. Mm -hmm. Not might. I will keep you in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. See? And the thing about it is, people got so many problems lined up in their head that, Lord, they got so many, they don't know what the other Lord, what am I going to do about it? Cast all your care upon Jesus. Amen. That's what you're going to do. Amen. You're going to give them to the Lord. See? Right. You're going to give them to the Lord and you're going to stop letting the devil torment you. Mm. See? Because the Bible says that, you know, that fear had torment. Yes. See? And if you got all those doubts and unbelief and stuff, you, you're scared of something. You're scared of something and nobody know it, know, <clears throat> know really what it is but you and God. That's right. You're the only two people who know it and those are the only two people who need to know it. That's right. That's right. You need to know it so you can give it over to him. And get your healing and get your deliverance from God. Right. See? Because the thing is, it don't do God any good to know it if you ain't going to give it to him. That's right. That's right. See? He wants you to know that he knows. Mm -hmm. He wants you to know that he knows everything going on in your life at this moment. That's right. Everything. Amen. See? And he, what did he say? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Why do you think people still struggle or whatever, you know, in their lives and all? Because they forsook him. Right. See? Right. They, by, you know, by continuing in the sin and by continuing in doubt and unbelief, you literally walked away from God. That's right. See? And the first place you walked away from him is in your mind because you stopped thinking on the things of God. That's right. What were you commanded to do? Think on things above, above. and not things on the earth. You have the mind of Christ. So you need to walk in the mind of Christ. Jesus ain't going to be wandering around here worrying and worrying about this and worrying about that, complaining about this, complaining about that, scared of this, scared of that. Jesus is scared of nothing. And we are supposed to be the same way if we are truly children of God. Amen. See? But it's a whole lot easier to say this stuff than do it. That's right. And that's the problem that Jesus had with these dudes, with these Pharisees. In verse 7 he says, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. When you allow yourself to get sucked up into man's doctrine, you are not going to get anything from God. That's right. What did he just say? In vain. Yep. Vain. You ain't accomplishing nothing by listening to the doctrines of men. That's right. Not a doggone thing. That's right. And he says... In verse 8, for laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. Stupid things right. is really the word he wanted to use. See? <laughs> See? Because these guys... They're teaching stuff that they know has no spiritual benefit, no spiritual effect except a bad one mm -hmm. on people that listen to this stuff. Yeah. Because if it, if that weren't the case, Jesus wouldn't have called it out. That's right. See? He called it out. See? That's why as a pastor, I have to be a watchman. I have to watch over the souls of people that God allows to hear me and those of you that attend this church. See? Yeah. That's part of my responsibility. But the thing is, is that, you know, I have to treat, treat certain things just like God does them. See? You don't get saved and I don't get saved until I confess it, right. my sin. Mm -hmm. I confess my sin. If I've got things in my life that I know that are a stumbling block, a big stumbling block, you know, I got to confess it. That's right. I got to suck it up and realize I'm letting the devil destroy me. Mm -hmm. See? And that's what's happening. And the thing is, is I'm taking a chance walking in sin. Why? You could die at any moment. That's right. Any moment. I know of people that have, that have, have shared stuff. They said, we were just sitting there on the couch and we were just talking, you know, just talking. And all of a sudden, they just died. 
See? Yeah. There are more than, I mean, there are a lot of stories like that. Because, yeah. see, I'm going to tell you something. I believe, because it happened in Scripture, I believe that there are people who just die. Nothing wrong with them. Right. They just die. Maybe. And the reason I believe that that, that that happens, and now I think now some people, I think God will call them home. Mm -hmm. Because just like John the Baptist, he was like in his early 30s. Mm -hmm. And God said, okay, your ministry is finished. Come on home. And I know John looked at God and said, but Father, couldn't you have let me die a different way? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But when you when you are totally surrendered to God, you know, you trust God. Right. No matter what, you trust him and stuff. But but these guys, they are they are they are worshiping the Lord in vain, or teaching this stuff in vain. And the reason is they don't want to know the Lord. Right. They don't want now listen to me. We got preachers like this. They do not want to know the Lord. They don't mind using the name of Jesus, but they don't want to tell you what he said. See? Right. It's like I said last week as well. You know, people don't, you know, when Jesus went in the, in the in those temples and stuff, and when he started walking around his ministry before he opened his mouth or whatever, you didn't hear not one bad thing about Jesus. Right. You didn't hear nobody talking about him. You know, you didn't hear nobody saying anything about Jesus once, you know, before he started. Think about it. Jesus was 30 years old when he started his ministry. So that was 30 years up to that where he still lived a life. See? But nobody heard, you know, there's not a lot written about that, if anything. Because we pick it up when he goes out on the ministry, when he gets baptized with John. See? Mm -hmm. That's when we pick up when Jesus came out. But before that, you didn't hear nothing about it. They didn't know it. What did, you, what did John say when he was coming? He said, look, here comes one that, you know, I'm not worthy to latch the shoes on his feet. Right. See? And they didn't know who he was talking about. They knew the Messiah was coming, but they didn't know how he was going to come. Most of them thought that he was going to bring an army <laughs> and that he was going to take over. They were going to just take over everything. See, mm -hmm. that's how people think, man. Mm -hmm. And people who think with their meat head are people that will never grow in faith. Right. People that will never be able to walk into things that God has promised them mm -hmm. and died for them to have. Right. They're not going to be able to do that, see. But... So what happened on Jesus' first ministry experience? Preaching. First thing happened. He started talking. They started planning. We killing him. <laughs> we gonna kill him. We gonna kill him. And people don't understand the magnitude of what I just said. Here is a man, All he, even when he started out, he started out doing good for people. People that nobody wanted anything to do with. And then, and the thing about it is, you know, then those uppity religious guys, they didn't come to him until they had a problem. Mm -hmm. Until they wanted something from it mm -hmm. and stuff. But we know that Nicodemus walked. He was a disciple of Jesus. Right. We know that, um, who's the guy that came and got the body of Jesus? But anyway, we know that he was a, a disciple mm -hmm. of the Lord and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But in secret. But I think that they just kind of blew that out after he died. See. But the thing was. Is, is that. they Those guys followed him. But nobody else. They Oh no no no. Uh -uh, we killing him. See. Because the thing about it was. The Pharisees. The religious Jews. And stuff. I mean, they controlled everything and everybody. They had the people walking in fear. If they didn't honor them and if they didn't say what they wanted them to say and tell them what they wanted, uh, wanted to hear. And the reason I know that is because in the ninth chapter of John, when the blind man was healed by Jesus and then they went and questioned his parents and the Bible said his parents knew that Jesus healed him. But when they, when they asked, oh, we don't know. Mm -mm, we don't know. Back in those days, the Pharisees was like the mafia. 
If you don't do what we tell you to do, first of all, we're going to kick you out the synagogue <coughs> or the temple. And the next thing you know, then we will have somebody take you out. Mm -hmm. Do you think they had any problem taking people out that didn't agree with them? Right. Who do you think was in charge of Jesus being killed? Yeah. It was the religious people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no, it wasn't the, it wasn't the doggone uh, 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 it wasn't the uh, the Gentiles. Right. It was the Jews. Right. His people. Yeah. His people decided to take him out. Because they were afraid they were going to lose their place in Rome. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. You got a lot of preachers in these churches. They're not going to preach the truth. They're not going to upset the apple cart. They're not going to preach on sin. They're not going to preach against anything that's a church or a denomination of doctrine. They ain't preaching against that at all. Because their motto is, we've got something for everybody. See? Everybody. See? And as long as you got that, that they got something for everybody, ain't nobody going to be calling that dude out but people like me. Because, see, I think that when when I believe, I don't think, I believe, when you got a preacher standing in the pulpit lying every week, not preaching the gospel, the whole gospel, we don't get to pick and choose, see? And the, the biggest difference is the fact that they preach a love, love, love message, you know? And if you go into every one of those in the house, they got a picture on their wall of Jesus like this. <laughs> See? Instead of one with his doggone hair just going out every which way, flames coming out of his mouth and all mm -hmm. of that. See? They think they, they don't... See, this is what happens when people don't have a relationship and when you put men in charge. See? They're going to come up with their own plan, <coughs> with their own kind of service, with their own kind of administration in the church mm -hmm. and stuff. They ain't going to follow the Bible. Mm -mm. They're not going to follow. Most of these churches today are more like businesses and companies and run that way than they are about the Father's business. Mm -hmm. See, you know, you got, you got, you got some church, you got like probably 30 pastors. You got an executive pastor. You got a pastor that's over the uh, the bathroom duty. You got a pastor that's over the biscuit ministry. You got a biscuit ministry pastor and stuff. I mean, you got an executive pastor and all of that. Can you? Can anybody give me a chapter and verse for any of those? Mm -hmm. Any of those. And another question: Is that really focusing on the spirit? No. no. Huh? No flesh. And what happens when the Bible says, if you live according to the flesh, you will, die. you will die. When you have churches orchestrating things of the flesh, in the flesh, they are dead or dying. Right. One of the two. Mm -hmm. Why? You cannot operate a house of God doing things according to the flesh. Right. And to the flesh only. Right. See? God never told me to cater to people. See, that wasn't going to ever happen anyway. I was like that before I got saved. It just got locked down a little bit more once Jesus came into the plan. Mm -hmm. See, you can't cower down to people. Right. If you're ashamed of Jesus, he said, I'm going to be ashamed Thank of you. you. Right. If you deny me, I am going to deny you as well. See, he ain't joking. And people, oh, well, you know, Jesus will never leave me. Are you a fool or something? Have you lost your mind? God took his spirit from King Saul. God doggone drop made up. Uh, uh, Ananias and Sapphira dropped dead. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was talking about earlier, about people just falling dead and stuff. See? What about the people that went in that, that, that came out of Egypt and went through the wilderness and never did, were able except for two? We're able to receive the promise of God. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what God is trying to show you right there. You can start out this walk with God the right way. And the more you continue to walk in the way of Jesus, the more you start kind of feeling this individual power and stuff. 
and start thinking that you don't really need Jesus anymore because you got to figure it figured out now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go on right this way, see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then one, by the time you get to the end of your life, you murmur, you complain, nothing's ever good for you, and stuff. God, you start cussing God and cursing God, see, because it's all his fault. And that's what a lot of people are saying today. Their miserable life is God's fault because they were so stuck on their pride and their arrogance that they didn't have the guts to repent and ask Jesus to forgive them. Mm -hmm. Don't you know, there ain't nowhere else you can go to get forgiveness of your sin but to Jesus. That's right. You can go and you can go fall down you know, in front of your church deacons, your preacher, you know, in front of everybody in the church and tell them how sorry you are that you've embarrassed the church, that you've done some stuff, you know, that has really put the church in a real hard place and all of that. You can say that for 40 days if you want to. That is not repentance. That is not repentance. The Bible says, yeah, if you sinned against somebody and if you've done something personally to somebody, go to that person. Right. But he never told you repenting before the church was going to cleanse you of your sin. That's, right. See? That's why I do not take put stock, uh, a lot of stock or any stock at all, in people going down to the front and saying that they repented their sin or whatever. This is how I feel about it. See, when Peter went to Cornelius's house. Mm -hmm. Cornelius invited all of his friends, all of his family, in order to what? Hear the word of God. Right. They hadn't heard those guys preach yet, see? Mm -hmm. But they had heard of them. Right. See? Yeah. So when he went in the house and Peter started preaching, then the Bible says all of a sudden everybody started getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Started speaking in other languages and stuff. They got saved. Nobody had to go down and fall down on the floor or go down in front of the fireplace and kneel down and say, oh, I'm so sorry, God. No, man. God convicted them where they were, and that's where they repented. That's right. That's right. All of this crap about, well, you need to walk down. No, you don't. I believe with my whole heart, if a preacher is preaching the true gospel of Jesus under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you that people get convicted sitting out there listening to him. And people who really are broken and, and, and really have, have uh, uh, experienced godly sorrow, they repent right where they're at. Right. That's right. See? Right where they're at. I've seen it happen too many times. I never could understand why everybody had to come down front. See? Mm -hmm. A lot of people ain't coming down front because they don't want everybody seeing what kind of slug they were. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But the thing is, if they truly repent of their sin, they're going to tell you about it. That's right. They're they're gonna, they ain't going to be able to keep it in. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you about it. Right. See? Because what happens is, well, a lot of times when these people go down front of the church and they, you know, say they get they repent and even some really repent for real, their people will come up to them after church and say, Man, were you really doing that kind of stuff? Mm. I can't believe you doing that kind of stuff. Mm. See? That's what they would do. That's what idiots would do. Mm. Yeah. Instead of praising God and dancing for joy with the person that gave their life to the Lord, they want to doggone, doggone, bring up all of this crap that they just repented of. Right, See? right. You mean you had an affair with so-and-so and so what? Right. And all of this. See? All of that, if that guy repented, you ain't got no business bringing that crap up right. anymore to him. If he wants to confess something to you, say, man, I'm really having a hard time, you know, uh, 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 letting go of that, then look, man, we'll pray one-on-one. -on -one. You don't call every doggone all them gossiping deacons and their wives. That's right. Say, hey, we need to pray, lay hands on Look, I would tell you, I wouldn't go to one church and let nobody lay hands on me today. That's right. Nobody. The Bible says to lay hands subtly on nobody, on, on, on people, yeah. and don't let people subtly lay hands on you. Uh-uh, that ain't happening, see? Mm -hmm. 
I got to know the person and their heart before they even pray for me. Mm -hmm. I don't ask anybody to just pray for me. Uh-uh. And all those people on Facebook, when somebody asks them to pray, and they say, oh, praying, and I'm thinking, okay, I wonder what kind of relationship you got with the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing that, that doggone burns my heart about a lot of people. They'll do stuff because it's the old cliche to do it, to say mm -hmm. it, brother. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just say it. Hide faith from whatever they say. And stuff. Blessed and all this stuff. A guy put something on that. I'm going to share this with you that I think about. A guy put something on there. Everybody that types in. What, what was it? Uh, 22 or something. A word or a number or something. He says, then God, all of your worries, all of your needs are going to be taken care of. <laughs> That's what he said on there. And so I said, really? <laughs> so I typed down there. I said, that's a lie. <laughs> I said, that's a lie, and that is not the truth. I said, there is no Bible for that. <laughs> None whatsoever. See? And then I put the scripture on there where the Bible says, a man don't work out and not eat. <laughs> See? <laughs> I get sick of that old stuff. Just say it, and God is going to do it. It's just like God is just standing over there, sitting over there in the corner, just waiting on you to use him like a doggone dog. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to throw this bone out there and I need you to go fetch it and take it where I want it to go. See, yeah. that's how they treat God. How stupid is that? And the sad thing is you got a bunch of people <laughs> with doggone bite the bait on that. Mm -hmm. Swallow that sucker. See, and God never told them <laughs> to believe any of that stuff. Right. And I'm thinking, I said, and I can't remember, I, may, I think I may have prayed this also. I said, so you're telling me that even an unsaved person, all they got to do is say it and God going to do it for them. No. You know, I mean, even being a child of God, it don't work like that. Right. No. You don't just tell God, hey, y'all, right there, I'm going to tell somebody, do this word right here, and you're going to have to take care of all of their problems. Mm. Or whatever. No, no, no. The God says that you overcome your problem, you get delivered from your problem, you get healed from your problems in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Not by yourself. See? Right. Stupid. I mean, I'm, I, it just boggles my mind. Honestly, I said this before. I have never seen in my lifetime of 67 years, I have never seen so many stupid people and so much stupid in my whole life. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm, I'm just being straightforward on it. I mean, I've never seen so many dumb people. Dude, just write anything on there and call it God and everybody go. <laughs> <laughs> they just follow that crap. See? And that tells you right there. It shows you who's rooted in the word and how many idiots you got out there. Right. See? Because there's no way, and then I looked up the guy on the on. I looked up his page to see where we was at. That dude over in Africa somewhere, <laughs> posting that stuff on Facebook. Yeah, Yo, you know, you do this and you're going to get this. No, no, no. See, and then see, this is the this is the problem. This is why a lot of people are going to go to hell. Too many people are looking for the easy way, the easy way, and the easy way out. They don't want to have the doggone do anything to receive from God. They want it to just all be handed to them, just like that. You know, they try to treat God like He's the federal government welfare. <laughs> yeah, that God, you know, He's welfare. You know, oh man, have you seen the welfare of Jesus? The welfare of Jesus, just place something on that page and you gonna get it. See, hmm. they don't realize that God is a spirit. <coughs> All of this foolishness, you know, even somebody that loves God and walks with God, they see right through that stuff. Right. But that guy made me so mad when I seen that. I said, that's a lie, lie, lie. I said, you lie. See? But do you know nobody else would call him one? Because he don't have no Bible for putting that on that. Mm -mm. There is no scripture that says I can just write something on Facebook. Think about it. Write it on Facebook. God's going to hear you. He's going to take care of all of that. Just say amen and share, and tomorrow you're going to get $10,000. Mm. I ain't never seen nobody doggone uh, 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 put on Facebook that they got $10,000 mm -mm. because they did. 
I ain't never seen that they got $10,000. See? Liars, see? Mm -hmm. Devils calling themselves men and women of God. See? Liars, see? And the thing is, is that there is a heavy price to pay for that. That's right. That's a heavy price to pay for that. Because first of all, you calling yourself somebody that's been sent by God, lie. Mm -hmm. You're telling people that if they do this, this, and this, is God is going to do that, lie. That's another lie. See? And not only that, you're trying to change the word of God. Mm -hmm. And God said, because you're trying to change my word, you know, that guy ain't got his name in the book of life. I can tell you that right now. People like that, no. See, so the thing is, is that the devil send those kind of people, and it's like I've always told you guys, don't get distracted by a whole bunch of doo-doo. See, because the devil has you going from, from, uh, from the East Coast to the West Coast to the uh, uh, North Pole to the South Pole, have you going all over the place, and by the time, you know, you get through doing all this running around, if they were to open up your head, it looked like a bunch of scrambled eggs up in there. <laughs> See, you've been played the fool. Mm -hmm. See, you've been played the fool. Um, Jesus says in, uh, I don't know if I read this already, but I'll read it again. And he said unto them, full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Mm -hmm. Keep your own tradition see and that's the problem that we have today is that people are more interested in doing what they want to do and ignoring what it is that God called them to do right. um, so <clears throat> I guess I end up right there sound like a good spot to stop I guess and um, and we'll uh, you know we'll we'll, we'll uh, continue uh, next week if the Lord wills because what I wanted to do was, uh, I am going to do some teaching on uh, or some preaching on on pastors, but I'm also going to do some more preaching on not just women as pastors, but women as women who serve God, as godly women who are mothers and godly women or ungodly women who are uh, who are wives and those kinds of things. So I had spent a lot of time on that last night because I thought that's what God wanted me to do, but as always, I'm Missed him again. Uh, so, no, so we'll see. Yeah, I'll bait him out. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of times, you know, when you prepare for something, well, at least in my case, you know, once you come into the fellowship with everybody, then, you know, listening and hearing people say different things, then, you know, God will just kind of shelve that that you had planned and say, let's go down this road. And stuff, and you need to learn how to trust God for your life that way, also, mm -hmm. yeah. because a lot of times, you know, places you might be going, God may say, "Don't go there," you know, or some place that you think you ought to go, God says, "No, don't go there," but I want you to go here. Mm -hmm. And stuff. The relationship has got to be developed to that degree and to that extent, to where it's the will of God. Remember, Jesus said, "Not my will, but thine, but thine but will." that your will will be done. And that's what uh and that's what Jesus, you know, wants us to do is to do the will of our Father. So we'll see next week uh what God has planned for us and, and I pray that what we shared this morning that it did uh minister to you to some to some degree and hopefully open your eyes to some things about yourself and not only that about other people that you may be associating with as well. In Jesus' name. Amen.